Hello everyone, my name is Haralambos, but you can call me Bobbies, and today I will give you a short introduction in Fuse file systems. As you saw in the previous video of this lecture, a file system is typically a part of the operating system which works as an abstraction layer between the applications and the storage devices. The file system decides how data will be stored and retrieved from a storage device. Fuse stands for File System in User Space, and it allows us to create custom file systems in user space and therefore we do not have to touch or affect any of the kernel functionality. But how does Fuse manage to do that? At first let's take a look of how a normal file system works. As an example we will use a, C, a simple C application and th when this application wants to access some data from a file it will use the read uh, function from libc and that will create uh, a system call which will invoke a mode suite from user space to the kernel space. The kernel uh, will see that uh, this uh, system call needs to be handled from the virtual file system layer, and then the virtual file system layer is responsible to forward the request to the respective uh, file system, for example, ext4. After the uh, file system handles the request, either reading data from a disk or doing some other operation, it or not, it will return the, uh, re the result back to the application. Fuse works in a similar way, with the difference that um, the virtual file system, uh, instead of uh, the virtual file system layer, uh, will forward the request to a kernel module called Fuse kernel module, and this uh, module will forward the request to uh, a user space library called libfuse, and this library then will forward the request to the uh, actual Fuse application that implements uh, the file system. Uh, so, as you can notice, Fuse consists of three main components. In the highest level, we have the, the Fuse application, which is uh, the actual implementation of the, our custom file system. This application interacts with uh, uh, a user space library, uh, the libfuse, uh, and the libfuse also interacts with uh, the kernel through the Fuse kernel module, uh, which also interacts with uh, the VFS, the virtual file system layer. Uh, also, you can notice that um, the path of a request, in the case of uh, a fuse, it's much longer than in normal file systems, and it also uh, includes more mode switches between user space and kernel space. As a result, uh, this can affect the overall performance, uh, the overall performance of the file system. So, why would someone uh, use fuse? Uh, the main benefit of Fuse is that it allows us to create custom file systems in the user space, and th which is much easier than doing it in the kernel space. In general, um, programming a simple application in user space is much easier. Uh, uh, it's much easier and with a shorter development cycle. And moreover, the developer does not have to learn a specific kernel API. And if something goes wrong, uh, nothing will get uh, uh, affected. Therefore, it's much more safer also for untrusted uh, uh, file systems that, uh, some, that uh, for example, a system admin uh, might not uh, know or trust. So, um, some of the real-world use cases that where Fuse is used are on-disk file systems, which are actual file systems, which are file systems that uh, um, interact with actual hardware devices. Uh, uh, we have also net, uh, a few uh, network-based file systems um, implemented in Fuse. Um, uh, where the storage uh, volume um, is in a, in a remote, uh, for example, server. We also have layering file systems which, uh, um, which do a specific operation on top of an existing file system, for example, an encryption of or, or a compression of the data before uh, passing them to the actual file system, uh, or uh, archive or and backup file system which also work on top of uh, exist on, on top of other uh, file systems. So how can we use Fuse? As we said, the Fuse application is a typical user space uh, program, and it needs to do two sp uh, and it needs to uh, do two specific things. At first, it needs to define how and which. Uh, file system operations the application will handle, and secondly, it needs to register these operations to libfuse. Red by registering these uh, operations to lib libfuse, it allows the libfuse to invoke these uh, uh, function implementations when a request uh, takes place. 
As a result, LibFuse provides an API, which is based on a callback mechanism in order to bind user -defined, uh, uh, the user-defined function implementations to the actual file system operations. Uh, Fuse provides uh, two, level, two, uh, two APIs, the, hi uh, the high-level API, which, is, which works in a synchronous way and in the path level, and the low-level API, which works in a synchronous way in the inode level. So let's take a closer look on the Fuse uh, application workflow. At first, the application needs to parse uh, the command line arguments from the user, then it mounts uh, the file system to a mount point, and it registers the file system, uh, implement the file system operations uh, to the libfuse. After that, uh, libfuse takes control and enters in an event loop. As soon as a request, uh, as soon as um, a request uh, is getting received, uh, the libfuse will check if uh, the file system operation, which is responsible for the request, uh, is implemented from uh, uh, the fuse application. And in that case, it will it will invoke the respective. Uh, uh, function. In case uh, the file system operation is not uh, implemented by the Fuse application, uh, the default um, implementation will be used. When we exit the event loop, our application needs to do uh, the necessary cleanup, which also includes unmounting the file system. And let's take now a closer look on the Fuse API. So, um, the, uh, so depending on the language, the API changes. But um, for example, in C, what we have to do is that we need to fill uh, the uh, the, struct, uh, the structure of uh, um, fuse operations uh, with um, the respective uh, functions uh, implementations that we have in our uh, application. Um, then we need to pass this struct to the libfuse, and then libfuse will uh, invoke. Uh, uh, the respective function when a request uh, takes place. So what are these uh, fuse operations? Um, overall, there are a, a lot of uh, uh, file system operations, uh, but we do not have to implement everything. Um, in particular, we will take a closer look to the ones that are really necessary for this uh, task assignment. And these are both present and these are uh, present in both high level and low level API. Uh, with only a slight different, uh, with only a slight exception, um, this is uh, the lookup uh, operation, which is only implemented in the low-level API, which is only necessary in the low-level API. So the lookup operation is uh, responsible to search uh, uh, the directory uh, entry, which is specified in the parameters, and return its uh, attributes. Um, this is because uh, the low-level API works in the inode level. And therefore, uh, whenever we want to do any uh, listing, uh, for example, of a directory or a search, then the lookup uh, application, uh, the lookup operation, uh, will be invoked. Um, other uh, 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 another uh, operation is the get attribute, the get utter, which is uh, which gets the attributes of, the, of a file, and some other very well known operations like read, write, read dir, mkdir, open. Uh, but let's take a closer look on, on MK node and create. Both of these operations can create a file, but um, uh, cre when we use create, we can only uh, create a, uh, a normal, let's say, a typical uh, file, uh, the file that we know, for example, a, te a text file. However, MK node gives us the possibility to create any kind of file, uh, which can be a normal file, which can be a character device, a named pipe, and more. At last, we have uh, the link-related operations, which are the sim link to create a symbolic link, and the read link, which uh, allows us to read the target of a symbolic link. So uh, in our uh, implementations of these uh, operations, in case something goes wrong, we have to uh, return uh, an error code. Um, there, there, uh, the, there, the error codes are defined uh, uh, in, you can find the definitions of the error codes uh, in easily. But here you can see a list of uh, some of the, uh, let's say, common uh, error codes. And for example, if you do not, if you um, use uh, a fuse application without um, uh, changing uh, uh, the, the function of a file system operation, uh, then the default uh, implementation of uh, this uh, fuse file system operation is to return uh, enosis, which means that the function is not implemented. 
So in the GitHub Classroom uh, repository, you can find um, uh, a description of uh, the task assignment, but overall what you have to do is to implement an in-memory file system using Fuse. Uh, your file system does not in, does not have to interact with any hardware uh, with any uh, actual device, but it can use uh, the process memory to store any necessary data. Uh, you can you can choose either the low level or the high level API uh, of uh, Fuse, uh, but but you need to make sure that you implement at least uh, all the operations that we mentioned earlier. Uh, and which are the necessary ones uh, for this uh, task assignment. Of course, feel free to uh, implement more of them. Uh, also take note that uh, the name of uh, the file uh, in our custom file system cannot exceed 255 ASCII characters and the uh, maximum file size is 512 bytes. So, um, in general, what you have to do is that you need to implement uh, these specific file system operations that we saw earlier. You need to register them in libfuse using uh, uh, the respective API. And at last, you need to manage uh, the data that uh, the file system needs to store. Uh, and there, uh, there, you have to choose uh, the data type that is more suitable for you, that you decide which is more suitable. Um, the, uh, therefore, uh, we strongly recommend to read the documentation of uh, Fuse that you can find online, either for high-level or low-level API. And there you can see that uh, Fuse already can do a lot of things for you, for example, parsing command line arguments uh, or uh, mounting the file system or uh, mounting the file system to a mount point. Um, moreover, um, you, as, uh, if you ever execute a Fuse application, you will notice that this application is uh, usually executed in the background and therefore you cannot see any log messages. Uh, to change that, you can use the F uh, command line option and this will uh, make uh, the Fuse application to run in the foreground and therefore uh, you, can, you will see any of, uh, 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 for example, any uh, debug messages that you have in your uh, file system uh, operation uh, in the implementation of uh, the file system operations. Moreover, in the case of uh, your application does not exit in a graceful way, uh, you can um, manually unmount uh, a file system using uh, this command. Thank you for your time. I hope this uh, presentation is useful for uh, the completion of uh, the task assignment. But in case you have any questions, feel free to ask them. Either from this, either in the Slack channel or in the Q and A session.